Well, hello, hello, and welcome back to another edition of Wisdom Wednesday. Today is the 23rd of August, and we are in Proverbs 23, which is in the uh, middle portion of the 30 sayings of the wise. So this section of Proverbs was not necessarily written by Solomon. Maybe it was partly compiled by him, uh, but throughout the uh, the, these 30 sayings, they are 30 sayings that um, were found to be of value and wisdom. And as you'll see, as we read a few of them, they fit along the lines of the book of Proverbs. They deal with the overall health of a human, be that spiritually, physically, relationally, emotionally, financially, we find that the book of Proverbs has this holistic view of what it looks like to be living as good stewards in good health um, and with good function and purpose as people as we pursue God. Remembering that the book of Proverbs rests on this concept that when we are uh, obedient to God and when we are following him and we revere him as God, that we are therefore walking in the purposes that God has for us. And in doing so, we are to live wisely along that journey. In the opening passages of Proverbs 23, uh, verses 1, it says, When you sit to dine with a ruler, note well what is before you, and put a knife to your throat if you are given to gluttony. Do not crave his delicacies, for that food is deceptive. And Proverbs has this continuation in uh, throughout the entirety of it, where it discusses this reality in various wording that comparison is the thief of joy. When we sit down with someone who is, in quotations, above us, uh, a ruler, someone who is further ahead uh, in that journey or has nicer things than we have, we Proverbs reminds us again and again to not look at those things in jealousy, but in thankfulness that we get to be part of someone's generosity around us and to us, that we too are supposed to be generous to others. Just as there are people that we look up to and go, oh man, one day maybe I will be at that position of life, so there are people who look to us. This is the, the spectrum of mentorship, of discipleship, of uh, competition, of life where we go, hey, one day I might be there. I remember when I was considering proposing to my wife and I looked at these relationships of mentors in our life that care deeply for us and I saw their spiritual development as a couple and the, the position they had in life in terms of uh, their uh, security, their careers, the purposes that God had laid upon them, their ability to parent their children. And I looked at uh, you know, my girlfriend, who's now my wife, and I thought, oh, we're not there yet, so we're not ready to be married. And I expressed this to one of my friends, and he said, that's really stupid. And I said, oh, thank you for that kindness. And he said, you get there uh, through the process. You're not gonna get there first. And, and so we, you know, my wife and I got married, and as time progressed, I, we put effort into the progressions to be a spiritually mature couple. Um, and we still have work to do. But we're further along than we were 12 years ago. And it's important to remember this elapsing of time. There's this saying, it says we underestimate or we overestimate what we can accomplish in a year, but we underestimate what we can accomplish in a decade. And sometimes we get burnt out thinking about our inadequacies in the short term, not realizing that the habits we're creating today will develop into incredible things that we could never fathom 10 years from now. The spiritual health, emotional health, physical health, um, financial health uh, that we have is a result of the patterns of our past. Here in Proverbs, again, we see this saying that comparison is the thief of joy. When you sit down with a ruler, uh, note well what is before you, and if you were given to gluttony, put a knife to your throat. Do not crave his delicacies, for that food is deceptive. And what this, what I see in this, friends, is this, that if we see something that someone has, 
and we feel utter jealousy to the point of where we would do anything to have what they have, then we have bought an into a lie of comparison that has removed our ability to have joy for what we have and it is going to ruin us. It would be better to put a knife to our own throat than to crave and be jealous for the things that others have. Now, that doesn't mean we don't go, hey, I like the stability that that person has. I like the spiritual development that that person has or the marriage that they have and I wanna work towards having that in my own life. There's a fluff flying around. Get out of here, fluff. I wanna work towards that in my own life. That's it, that is it. That is a valuable thing to do. We don't wanna sit by passively and do nothing. We wanna be active and proactive, but we have a challenge when we want uh, the long-term goal in immediacy. Before we develop the habits, we want the result. And what happens with that is the result actually ruins us because we don't have the integrity to sustain what we then have. We won't have the maturity to sustain the relationship we have. We won't have the, um, understanding and the knowledge to sustain the possessions that we have. And this is very evident in the world around us uh, in when people receive something before their due time, it is usually blown away and wasted in a way that is not, uh, not beneficial. So comparison is the thief of joy. It is okay to look around and say, I like what they have and I am interested in, in working in that direction. But when we allow um, that to become our only focus in life, it will rob us of our joy, and that is deception that we are falling into. In verse six, it says, do not eat the food of a begrudging host. Do not crave his delicacies either, for he is the kind of person who is always thinking about the cost. Eat and drink, he says to you, but his heart is not with you, and you will vomit up the little you have eaten and will have wasted your compliments. This speaks to bitter generosity. Have you ever experienced bitter generosity? Maybe it's been, maybe someone's uh, been generous to you, but really you felt the undertones of that generosity or it came with a specific uh, string tied to it or undertone. Hey, here's this, but you're like, oh, I don't like that. That's not generosity. That's called business. And I'm fine with business as long as business is business, but don't pose business as generosity because that's not generosity. Generosity is giving selflessly without any expectation of return. If you invite a friend over to your house and you buy a ribeye steak and you grill that sucker up perfectly and you present that to your friend with the expectation that when you go to their house, they will reciprocate and buy the exact same quality of steak and grill it in the same manner and marinate it the way you did with the butter and the salt and the steak spice and, and they've perforated the steak. That's not generosity. That's business. That's a different thing. What we see here in Proverbs 6, 7, and 8 is it says that if all of our time is spent with people who are gen bitter generously, who are bitter in their generosity, it will uh, eventually degrade and ruin the relationships that exist. That that is the type of person who always thinks about the cost, eat and drink, but his heart is not with you. And so there is a difficulty there. Friend, I want to encourage you that maybe you found yourself in that position of giving in bitterness. And yeah, we can repent of that. And in the future, the way we would go about that is maybe be, maybe you have to be less generous with something smaller that you feel no pain in the generosity. And as you learn to not receive reciprocated uh, blessings because of that, then increase that generosity. Because if we're giving solely for the point of trying to receive back, then we've missed the point of generosity. We've missed the very heart of it. And God is caring about our heart, not just our actions. He doesn't care that we do the right thing if we're doing the right thing for the wrong reasons. He desires our heart to be in the right place. So friends, I wanna encourage you in these things today. To, that comparison is the thief in, of joy. So be joyous with what you have. You can uh, 
it is important to earn the things we have, not think we deserve the things we have, and so put ourselves in a position of being in danger. And lastly, friends, uh, we want to be generous without bitterness. And I hope you've enjoyed today's Wisdom Wednesday. We will see you next week for another edition. God bless.